autologous transplantation in multiple myeloma has been a standard practice for the younger patients with newly diagnosed disease. This is because of randomized trials uh, from around the world, literally, that show that compared to conventional chemotherapy, high-dose therapy and autografting has achieved higher overall and extent of responses, as well as prolonged in many studies the uh, time without myeloma and the overall survival. Now, there also are uh, next generation studies that show the value of double transplantation or two high dose therapies and autologous stem cell rescue compared to a single transplant. What's new now is with the advent of novel therapies is the incorporation of lenalidomide, dexamethasone, or bortezomib into the transplant paradigms. And there, we now have, for the first time, overcome some of the adverse cytogenetic features, such as 414, multiple myeloma. And the question can now be asked, when you utilize novel therapies as initial treatment in myeloma and achieve high extent and frequency of responses, such as the combination of bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone together, what is the added value now of doing high-dose therapy and transplant? So we actually have randomized trials, both in the United States and in Europe, that are examining the question of incorporation of novel agents into the transplant paradigm and trying to define in the new world the role of high-dose therapy and transplant. Now, as of this year, new treatments used initially to consolidate the response to transplantation and then to maintain the response are looking very promising. Now, in this setting, allogeneic transplantation is also an option for patients who are younger and have uh, otherwise uh, performance status allowing this to be possible. The story of allogeneic transplantation in myeloma is a happy one in the sense that full high-dose therapy and myeloablative allogeneic transplantation over many years can achieve high responses and prolong event-free and overall survival. The problem is the transplant-related mortality, and it is because of the graft versus host disease that can occur both acutely and chronically in our disease and can account for mortality or uh, limitation of quality of life uh, in the chronic setting. Therefore, many allogeneic transplantation in myeloma, as in other diseases, chronic myelocytic leukemia and others, has been utilized in an effort to allow the donor immune cells to engraft in patients, restore blood and immune function of donor type in the patients and have donor immunity mediate the anti-myeloma activity. It's called graft or donor versus myeloma effect. Uh, this, when it works, is phenomenal because you have a new immune system that's working against the cancer. The problem is even with the mini allogeneic transplantation, which is much lower doses of treatment, just enough to allow the donor cells to, uh, if you will, make room for the donor cells uh, to engraft and recreate the immune system. Even with that lower intensity treatment, the transplant-related mortality is still on the order of 10 to 20 percent. So at NCCN, we do think about allogeneic transplantation, primarily mini allogeneic transplantation, but it's usually in the context of a clinical trial so we can try to exploit this immune benefit while at the same time avoiding the attendant toxicity.